Hello and welcome to the Pup Mommy. It's another one of those talking head videos. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about pet sitting. And pet sitting as in, are you going to hire a pet sitter? What questions should you expect to be asked? Or if you're starting a pet sitting business, what questions should you be asking the owner? So it works both ways. So my questions are divided into different categories. There's food, there's let's call it potty break exercise, there's uh, exercise and playtime, and then there's behavior, health, and of course the inevitable insurance certificate. So let's get started. And I will put all of these questions in the description section, and then you're gonna see me constantly moving my head back and forth because there's no way I could possibly remember all these questions and there's quite a few of them because remember as in what I said with the earlier video on dog walkers vetting dog walkers you as a pet owner are financially and legally responsible for anything that your dog does so it's always important that if you're going to allow someone to come into your home it doesn't matter if it's you know 10 minutes in the morning 10 minutes in the afternoon or what or whether they're actually going to be in your home with your dogs you need to make sh absolutely sure that you have the right individual caring for your dogs. And the same thing too, again, if you're a pet sitter, you want to know what you're getting into. So without further ado, let's get started in the first category, which is food. Some of the questions you should be asking, for example, does you, do you have, obviously, do you have a feeding schedule? And how frequently is that? Uh, how is it done? Is it a combination of wet and dry? Is it raw? Are there business Biscuits? Um, are there uh, finicky eaters? Do we have dogs that uh, you have to have to have special needs or special requirements in terms of like even my Ophelia, you know, she'll eat two thirds of her food in her dog bowl, but then for the last third, you've got to take the dog bowl and then you've got to hold it for her. Don't ask me why I allowed that to happen, but it happens. And that's what, that's what I put up with. But, um, you know, sometimes if you have a multiple dog family too, depending on the relationship of the dogs, um, sometimes you have to put the bowls in different rooms. Sometimes there may be a little bit of resource guarding and other times everybody could be possibly happy. Um, not only that, but is there also a protocol for exercise before and after eating? And I say at the protocol for this because especially if you have deep chested dogs, um, we have the problem of bloat and we want to prevent bloat. And so when, if the dogs are exercised, they need to lay down for a while before they eat. And then of course, after they exercise, I mean, after they eat, they need to be quiet for a while. Um, another thing to know is if of course your dog is on any medications. Now medications are given, most of the medications are given with food, but there are also medications for eyes, ears. Some have to be given with a syringe. And then there are medications too, like metronidazole, which is really nasty tasting that you've got a mask and liver sausage or cheese or some other form of food. So those are some of the questions for the food category. Now, when we are talking about the potty breaks, then we, we're talking about how frequently do they go out, for how long, where are the cleanup bags, and then also to ask the question, Are they, can I expect any accidents in the house? Now, a lot of people might say, of course not, of course not, but just still ask where the cleaning supplies are. The other thing to notice, all, note also is that not every accident is a typical potty accident. Sometimes dogs throw up, um, and so that's why you need to know where the cleaning supplies are. My little thumper has SIBO, S-I-B-O, and uh, there isn't a day that goes by, even though he's on meds, that he's not hurling somewhere on something. So always need, always a good question to ask if you're, you know, if you're, you can expect accidents. Um, now we come over to exercise and playtime. Now with exercise and playtime, that of course is dog walking. And it's always good to know and to ask where are the leashes, where are the collars, where are the harnesses? Um, how long do you walk your dogs? Are there any times of the day or night that you don't walk your dogs or when you walk your dogs? If you have more than one dog, is the dog walk separately? Are they walk together? Do they go to dog parks? Do they walk walk on leash, do they walk off leash? Other questions that you can ask, are their dogs allowed to stop and, you know, stop and sniff? Because a lot of people, when they go out walking, they go out walking and the dog has to keep up with them. And, and other times like me, 
you know, what should be a half an hour walk turns into a 90 minute walk because we stop every 10 feet because the dogs have to examine everything. Um, another thing to ask also is, are there, is there any wildlife in the area? Um, you know, sure there's squirrels, there's birds and all that, but then you may live in an area too where there are coyotes and skunks and deer. So that's always something to be on the lookout for. Um, another thing to think about is, and to ask is, are your dogs allowed to go to dog parks? Are there other dogs on the dog walking route? Is there a special route that you go on that the dog's familiar with? Are they going to meet other dogs? Are those some of those dogs, dogs that they don't necessarily like? That's also an important thing to ask. Now, the other type of exercise that occurs is the type that's in and around your own home. And so then it, you, if you have a fenced yard, that's one thing. Otherwise, do you have an invisible fence? When you exercise with the dog, how do you play with the dog? How long do you let the dog exercise? What toys does the dog play with? How frequently or how long do you want the dog to play with the toy? Because keep in mind too, that during t different times of the year, it can get warm out, hot out, and dogs can get overtired. They can get overheated and you don't want that. So pay attention to some of those questions as well. And and then we come over to health. Um, one of the things you should be asking as a pet sitter or be expected to be asked, does your dog have any injuries? Do your dog have any illnesses that I should be aware of or that you should be, we should be aware of? Are there any places on your dog that is sensitive to touch where they don't like being touched? A lot of dogs don't like being touched on their head. Some dogs don't like paws being touched. Some dogs don't like rears being touched or underneath. There may be an injury there or they may not simply be feeling well, or they may have just gotten over a limping. So that's something to keep in mind and to be asking about. Um, also, are any of your dogs in heat? Well, that's, some, that's something to, or are they going to be in heat? Another key question to ask. Um, and then of course, the, 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 the number one question is, of course, how can you be reached in case there is an injury or illness? And also, what are the phone numbers of your vet? Now, some people have one vet, some people have two. I have two, an emergency and a regular vet. So always make sure you have those phone numbers on hand. And now also behavior wise, and this is a little touchy, especially if you're going to be a pet sitter asking someone. Um, you want to know, and you have to ask very nicely because again, I keep saying touchy because it is. Does your dog have a bite history? And maybe that's something that you don't necessarily ask in exactly those words. So does your dog nip or has it ever nipped? Or, you know, just so you get the point across because you want to know, um, again, if, you know, you, you need to be a little extra careful. Um, if you are a multi-dog family, do all your dogs get along? That's something that also is very important because dogs have a pack mentality and anything, anywhere can happen at any time. Um, what commands does your dog understand? All right. Some dogs, you know, they're the basics, the sit, the stay, the down, the leave it, but make sure that you understand what the dog understands and what the dog doesn't understand. Um, and also how do you discipline your dog if the dog misbehaves? All right. Sometimes with my dogs, all they need is the look and other times the voice. And the, yeah, I can put the fear of God into my dogs without, and I never touch my dog. I ne never hit my dog, kick my dog, nothing like that. It's the voice and it's the voice and the eyes. Um, the next thing is, uh, you know, just to, as a matter of course, are the dogs allowed on the furniture? Um, and also again, are there any dogs or animals that your dog does not like? Are it, these are some of the questions that I would expect to be asked if someone's going to be pet sitting in my, you know, for me. And also again, as a pet sitter, what you should be asking the owner so that you know what you're getting into. And if you even want to do pet sitting for that owner. Um, and then finally, of course, as an owner and, and the person is coming into your home, you want to see a certificate of insurance. All right. You want to make sure that they are covered. Uh, it's not only, a, not only your liability, but again, it's their liability too, in case something happens to the dog while it's in their care. So you, these are some of the things that you really need to, to, to think about and to be, should be asking. Um, I think I've covered everything. I've talked very quickly. Again, I'll put everything in a list. It'll be in the description section and I'm going to put it on my website as well. So you can also, you all can also can visit that if you like. Um, if you, if I left anything out or you have any comments or questions, feel free to, um, 
contact me. My information is in the description section. You can also reach me through my website. I'm also on social media, on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on, I'm, I'm everywhere. Um, so, <laughs> so anyway, I appreciate your watching. Thank you very much. If you haven't, don't forget to click and like and subscribe and all the rest of that stuff. Um, so I hope this has been helpful for you and give you something to think about because dogs are such an incredibly important part of our lives. So again, thank you for watching and bye for now.